the local park, that little slice of oasis in an otherwise busy town, that place to relax, listen to nature, have a picnic or watch the world go by. It's often the first connection us humans have with wildlife outside of our own home. Our first chance to explore what wild places can offer. Our first time truly observing and interacting with the wild animals that call a local park home. But have we ever stopped to think that whilst we're admiring the beauty and forming these wonderful connections, that the wildlife are learning about us humans too? Our park is bursting to life with babies of all kinds. Common mallards, poo tangi tangi, pa pango, poo kekko, weweya, feral pigeons, coots, and one of the most regal, wana, the black swan. The animal encounters with us shape the animal's behavior as much as ours. Whilst we are taking photos and documenting our little one's lives in these special places, they too are documenting us. Over the last few months, I followed the lives of a local family of babies, trying to find out what it is that they are learning and how we humans can make our interactions with wildlife as good for them as it is for us. These soon-to-be parents build and guard their nest well. A bonded pair for life, they take their parenting roles seriously. Whilst one is sat on the eggs, the other fiercely defends their precious developing young against potential threats or intruders. After roughly 36 days of incubation, the parents are finally joined by four to six little whitish grey bundles of cuteness. It doesn't take these 200 gram fluff balls long to start exploring. Within 24 hours, they can leave the nest and within 36 hours, they are bobbing along on the water. Their natural foods are grasses and pond weeds, shown the ways by their adults. It's a tiring life keeping up with the grown-ups. Lots of swimming, foraging and grazing. It's far easier to hitch a ride or snooze on a parent's back, a privilege that will stop once they get too big and heavy. Birds have around 25,000 feathers and preening them is vital. This allows the birds to remove dust, dirt and parasites from their feathers and align each feather for the best fit. Swans also spend time spreading preen oil along their feathers to help maintain their flexibility and keep them from breaking. Feathers in good condition form a barrier that helps repel water. There's lots of things for these babies to learn about being a swan, but what, I wonder, are they learning about us? They see their parents move towards humans or the sound of rustling bags. Clearly, they learn that humans can often mean food and their fear of humans decreases. Some are so in tune with humans that they leave the lake the moment they see me, showing no fear, just expecting food. A camera is not quite what they had in mind. This can be nice for people, but it can bring them close to less well-meaning humans too, which can be very detrimental to their well-being. So what about us humans that do mean well? Should we be feeding and interacting with the wildlife? Ultimately, if you watch the swans for any length of time, you see them find their own food. Whether it is eating the foliage dangling over the water's edge, the pondweed beneath the water's surface, or the grass on land, there does seem to be plenty of food on offer. It's fascinating to observe their behavior and humans really need not interfere. However, feeding wild birds brings delight and pleasure to a lot of people. So, whilst enjoying nature, it's important that we care for it too. What I found really interesting about making this movie is just how much animal conflict us humans have elicited through actually trying to be really nice. These animals are living in much higher numbers thanks to all the extra food from humans, which on one hand could be really good. 
But this means that almost constant fighting is part and parcel of what I have called the feeding frenzy. And I felt quite conflicted because on one hand, I could hear these children having an amazing time watching the wildlife and interacting with them, yet I was watching endless fights break out between the wildlife. It was at this point I realised how detached a lot of the human race is from reading animal behaviour and how important that is to reconnect. So, what things should we be feeding our waterfowl? How do we keep them happy and healthy? We know that bread is often a go-to for duck and swan food. However, it is lacking in a variety of vitamins and nutrients. Bread is a food that can be quite rich, which is not good for growing young, as it can make them grow far too quickly, quicker than they're able to put calcium down in their bones, which can create a lot of growth defects. Ones that you're quite used to seeing at the local park is angel wing. Human food should always be swallowed with water, but rotting or decaying food matter on the bottom of ponds is very bad. It can create lots of toxic nasties that can kill all types of wildlife. Now we've heard what not to do, what can we do? Well, simply observing them behave naturally is the best option, but if feeding them is the way for you, let's talk healthy options. Try dried oats, shredded lettuce, corn or peas. These birds are a lot smaller than humans. They don't need heaps of food. Remember, they are still finding food whether you're here for them or not. So if they've stopped eating, you stop feeding. Our little swans will stay with their parents until they are nine months old, learning everything they need to live life successfully in the world. They will pass on their knowledge to future generations, just like us. Let's remember to keep our local park and wild places healthy and teach others to be respectful so that everyone's little ones can grow up and have beautiful places to share with future generations. <laughs>